Good evening and uh, what day is it? Monday. Yeah, Monday evening. And welcome to Peanuts and Single Malt. That's what I'm going to call my periodic show that I'm going to put up. Everybody's got something going, so um, that's, what I'll, that's what it'll be. And um, so this one's going to be Peanuts and Single Malt number one. <clears throat> We've got a lot, a lot to cover and um, uh, <clears throat> at the moment I'm wearing my, um, my Harris Tweed cap which was a gift from a very good friend, a Scottish man. Um, I'll now move over to uh, just to show you uh, Double Boost sent me uh, a cap and uh, thank you very much John and I'll wear this every time I'm eating fish and chips. And then we can move over to my Gem Trek cap, and uh, this cap, of course, is, uh, is, a, is a limited edition which we've put together to try and help me get to the bash this year to um, supplement uh, my costs because it's a long way. Uh, I've got the longest distance to travel of anybody of the YouTube creators that go to the bash uh, as we try to on a yearly basis. So. Uh, get onto my channel or send me an email and um, to Bruce get her out at uh, gmail.com Bruce get her out at gmail.com and uh, you can purchase those you can also um, purchase my uh, my indicators there we go we go there let's see those are the indicators there's all the details Thanks very much to Keith Fenner for giving me giving a heads up on this as well in his latest uh, latest video. So without further ado, we'll get into uh, a, the swag. Excuse me of things that we need that, that we've got to discuss tonight. Um, the bases are loaded. As once again, I like that. Uh, I like that. What's that? over here um, in in this in this box is a special sword. That came in. That came in today um, for repair, and uh, so that'll be a feature in the future. Uh, the other thing is, we, we I just recently or yesterday put up a video uh, showing my um, my uh, my True Line 88 uh, item that I've put together for the wrong foo and all its derivatives of uh, mill drills with the, with the round columns. To um, give that a straight line when they raise, when you raise and lower that. So if you can go to that video, you can see uh, all about it. And I'll be featuring that at the bash. I'll be showing that at the bash. Um, we're going to be mounting that on a on a a mill drill, and that'll be featured there uh, on in real time. Okay, so there's, and, and that on that it's. We're showing the componentry uh, of um, of this unit that I've come up with, with the slide fixture, the clamping fixture, and the beam and the angle uh, bracket. The beam and the angle bracket that uh, I'm manufacturing. So. At present, it is uh, we're featuring those, and we're asking for expressions of interest. Uh, right beside me on the floor here is a 22-gallon drum of titanium swarf, and that comes from the first thing that we're going to show you uh, that we're going to feature here. It's the first time I've ever machined uh, any. Uh, Anything in titanium, and it was quite a challenge. It was, uh, this is this one here has got a hole in it, and a hole drilled through it, and uh, they've got these grooves, and then two two slots that go down the length. Now uh, those slots were made with this two millimetre, not with this one, but with a two millimetre diameter. Uh, four four flute cutter 
Uh, one of them went ping this morning, but the second one managed to do the job. The drilling that everybody knows about, the titanium, of course, the, the dangers is if it gets hot, then it can uh, catch fire and, uh, and it work hardens very quickly. So those two that I had to drill through, I drilled from both sides. And these are the drill bits. These are just standard job of drill bits that I used. So I, I drilled uh, each side with half a half the drill. Start, then went over to to a, put another new one in, and and carried on working like that, because I didn't want them to work uh, to work hard and grab or so forth. The actual pecking was one tenth of a once I'd got down to about that that depth there, then I had to peck one tenth of a millimetre each time, pull it out, clean the swarf, because the one thing we didn't want was to jam it up, and once that had jammed, this could break and we'd have a terrible trouble. The idea was to get some um, uh, carbide drills, but they weren't available, and so I went for the high speed, and I'm happy to say that they that worked. The first, the first lot of, of, of secondary drilling I did with this high speed uh, drill bit and I sharpened that seven times in, during the quarter and then I bought uh, this Tyann uh, coated one and used that as well. Now what I did with this one was I ground, ground back the flutes all the way down from here down because when I was drilling in I could hear it squealing and and starting to little tighten up a little bit so I decided to relief all that part of the drill bit so that it would only be working on the top section um, and that was successful once again that was a, a, a lot of work and then the final the final work that I did on it was to uh, round out the edges because these cables have got to go through this um, and so I used the nine, the nine cutter, um, and this I've featured this many times before. It's a wonderful thing, and it's radius, so it was very good for doing the radius inside there uh, on both on both ends. And this end here, of course, is quite thin. It's eight and a half millimeter hole and a ten millimeter spigot on the end there. That this will be featured in the future um, as well. That's for an experimental job. So we started off with a bar like that, a bit a bit longer than this is part of it, and you're looking at $150 here, just in that piece. Um, I can't show it, but this is some nice thick swarf out of high density polyethylene from a job that I did, and this was drilling uh, drilling some large holes in the high density polyethylene. And that was the swarf that ended, I ended up with. Over here, we have two Eclipse V, v blocks uh, made in England, number 216. Now these are kindly been um, loaned to me by uh, JB and Oz, uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise known as Marcus Wilson. Uh, he's uh, brought them over so I can look after them for him because they're a little bit big for him. Now, the next, the next thing I'm going to feature is this Pratt, Pratt Bernard, and a lot of people have asked me about this, this Pratt Bernard collar chuck. Now this was originally had, uh, it was a D14, originally had the pins in it, I've donated those pins to somebody else, and I chucked that up in the regular chuck, and I use this. Now this is a beautiful piece of machinery. Uh, it's very, very old, but it's, it's, got, it's got a beautiful operation there. Nice, nice big taper, uh, a, little, a little keyed slot. And um, that takes these steel, uh, hardened steel, um, teeth there's four of them, there's six of them there they work with a with a spring a spring loaded affair and this one here works 
from 25.4 to 28.6 millimeter or uh, one inch to one and an eighth inch that's an EC10 collet now whether you can see that there uh, the EC10 collet, they're, they're the collets, they're beautifully made um, and this is this is the nut with the slot in it uh, that goes, the, the, the secondary part of the nut so that, that goes down and engages as you can see absolutely beautiful collet chuck when I, when I got that collar chuck, I also got this key and the key, uh, as you can see, it's got a couple of damaged teeth in it. So I made a new one. I've, I've machined that, uh, cut, the, cut the, um, the teeth on it and, hard, and had it hardened. So all it is now is a matter of swapping those over. For the time being, I'm still using this one. The next, the next feature, the next feature item is this um, diffuser from from a pump, and these we have cast, and, and this is part of these engineering works that I've been doing over a long period of time. Um, so, on the other side is a set of screws, uh, screw holes in here, and uh, what what we've found is we're, going, we're having some little anomalies between the parts being manufactured and actually arriving here in Australia. So there's a challenge here. I have to make up a test jig that will check to see if there's um, these drilled holes, drilled and tapped and uh, have helicoils in them, are uh, within, within the uh, re required um, dimensions that I've laid out. So that's, that's a, a project that I'll be working on. Another item is this beautiful Nitto um, little mag, mag uh, borer. Now this one here is, is something really, really good. It's got, it can, it's got a sliding facility, will slide backwards and forwards and a little bit, not much, a little bit and it can also turn a little bit sideways it's, ba it's, um, it's battery operated, it has a has a slide in battery here that drops in, drops in here and then it has a little lid on it that that has to be in place for it to operate this little rotor brooch, it's a beautiful thing. It has this handle that just clips in, clips in there to operate it. And that handle can go on the other side as well and operate it from this side as well. So all in all, this is a wonderful piece of machinery. It's not mine, it's on loan. But I'm showing it. This is made by Nitto in Japan. Where you can see the details. Uh, and it costs about three grand here in Australia. When it comes to the whole kit and caboodle and it takes it takes the, the standard rotor brooches. I must also show that it's got this other feature which is a quick fixture if we line up the dimple with the line here just locks in place and all you have to do is turn it and it comes out this dimple goes in turn it and it comes out fantastic it's really well thought out well engineered um, item and uh, I'm sure this big I borrowed it to look at a particular job tomorrow that has very little height that I've got to get in to, um, to do some drilling. And what I'll be doing, uh, because I've got to drill holes and it won't take a chuck, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be cutting one of these off 
drilling a hole in the flat, tapping a thread and putting a drill bit and, and drilling this, machining this hole out and putting a drill bit in there and using this as, a, as, as an arbor for a drill. That's the, excuse me, that's the plan. Getting, getting back to our peanuts, our peanuts and our uh, single bolt. Not a bad drop. Okay, so what else have we got to show here? Ah, I'm going to do a bit of heavy lifting here. Well, maybe I'll just try and swing that camera around so you can see, um, see it. I'll just come down a bit. I was chasing, I've been chasing these. The bit on an old machine that was scrapped. There's a couple of really solid, really big uh, parallels off a uh, off a milling machine. They've got a they've got a T slot in the top, which is smaller than the T slot that I normally use. So I'll be machining those out. Um, and uh, if I could. If I can convince him, I'll get uh, Stefan uh, Gotsrita to come over here and scrape all this down. I doubt if that'll happen though. <laughs> um, what else have we got? We've got we've been through everything basically. We've got we've got it all in place. So don't forget our uh, our get her out gear indicators. The metric ones are, are on their way. I'm working on those now, and um, of course the Gemtrek caps, and the other item we've got is the True Line. There we go, which I featured, and we're looking at even more than just what we've got on this list here. And that's where you can get in touch with us. So that's it for uh, tonight's uh, episode of uh, Peanuts and Single Malt. And uh, we wish you all the best. Um, what else? Um, just about, that's about it, I think. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for everybody for watching. Ah, we have one other item. I, I did a shout out. My granddaughter, 12-year-old uh, granddaughter, Miss Jazzy, uh, who's also known as the Bolt Ninja, she, um, she loves the Meccano. Now, I've got my, a little what's left of uh, my Meccano set from the, the early 60s when I was 11 or 12 years old. And a gentleman uh, answered my call, uh, Mr. Gary Healy, down in Albany, in the, that's the southern tip of Western Australia, and he sent through to me uh, an old Meccano book. And this, and this is exactly what I wanted for my granddaughter to show her, so she could... Uh, she's absolutely amazing. She'll take these drawings these pictures and she will build according to these pictures. No problems at all. She's, uh, if you ever need anything made, if you ever buy anything from IKEA and you need it assembled, I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk to my, uh, my favourite number two granddaughter, Miss Jazzy, and she might be able to help you. Thanks for watching.